Merry meet. Welcome to part two of this read. The third and final card is how we use a weapon of Midsummer to hit our target of the Ace of Cups. And it is Doro, the red bearded Wayland the Smith. Or Wayland Smith. Now, for interest, I thought I would have a look at the two books the one from the Fairy Ring Oracle and also the Pagan Ways Tarot. Um, I also have my own to add to this, but we'll see what she's got here. And Pull up what we may. So in the Wayland, he's in the summer court. So it sort of ties in as well with midsummer there. Well, a little bit later. He's more Beltaner. Or the beginning of summer. Midsummer is actually the solstice or the middle of summer, so to speak, not the beginning. Tired. Okay, so card number two in the summer court. And the uh, midsummer. That's, let me see, winter, imok, winter, imok, yosta, boltana. It's the fifth card on the seasonal wheel. Ace is one, so one, five, and then Wayland over here is on the, the second quarter, second card of the summer court. So this card shows a burly elf and blacksmith working his anvil. Remember that um, the she <laughs> are also elves, dwarves, sprites by many different names. They're pretty much nature spirits of Europe or Europeans ancestry. So the fairy. Though most fairies are afraid of iron, some are blacksmiths. In Scandinavian myth, for, for example, dwarves are supernatural smiths dwelling deep in the earth and possessing all the secrets of magic, magical metallurgy, forging tools for the gods, including Odin's spear and Taurus hammer. Northern European fairies, I hate using that word, so I keep wanting to say the she, <laughs> include Abrik and Regan, while in England there is Wayland Smith, variously described as a dwarf, elf or giant. And I would like to add to that, he shifts, so he shifts form. He can be dwarf or giant, as many of the pantheon, if you're going to use that word, or ancestral spirits of European peoples. <clears throat> All our spirits shapeshift, including the animals. Wayland Smith lives in Wayland Smithy, a chambered near Neolithic long burrow in Berkshire in England. It is said that if a horse is tethered at the smithy under a full moon, the owner returns in the morning, he will find it newly shod. Some say that Wayland is a king of the elves, or the she. Supernatural smiths dwell deep underground, beneath the mounds or in caves, perhaps in the land of the dead. In, in stories, they sometimes possess the power to restore life or to remake those who have wandered into their realms, remake them. Okay, pull, um, bring their pieces back together. And that's very close to dwarves in Scandinavian folklore as well, by the way. There are tales of people being reforged or rejuvenated in the Smith's fire as a metaphor shamanic into, um, initiation. Now, remember how we brought up the brownie and the half fire? Well the forge and the fire so it goes back sort of uh, circles comes back it keeps you know tying together oh where was I oh now my battery is flashing witches are traditionally called upon to forge their own affirme or black handled knife as part of their initiation quest to introduce them to the mysteries of Wayland the Celts group Smith's Druids as having the power of casting spells and curses. Blacksmiths are the possessors of magical power, while ordinary humans hang lucky horseshoes with points upright so the power does not spill out. Smiths hang them point down to pour the power onto their anvils. So if you've got an anvil, get a horseshoe, make sure it's pointing down. I'm just going to read the divination of this because my battery is flashing. It's going to be a quick one. When Wayland appears on the cards, he indicates a period of hard work, creation, craftsmanship, knowledge, skills and mastery. Opportunities and success are at your hands and your efforts will bring rewards. Wayland also indicates in some sense transmutation and forging new things from the old. Now, again, repeating ourselves with the Ace of Cups with new things. And then also the half fire in the brownies house there as she's keeping clean around it. The way of using Midsummer 
is with the forge, with fire, with the anvils. So there's going to be some beating here and there. <laughs> Probably not physical, but hey, maybe. Um, I'm actually going to, because my battery is flashing as well, I'm going to do more in depth with Wayland, I think. Um, I'm going to do that and record that and put that up tomorrow on the the weird craft site because this is how we use the tool of midsummer to target the ace of cups so i hope this has helped um mr seven this was for you but for those of you on especially in this platform that are trying to create a focus and inspiration of where we go next and you know how we can hit our target how to use our weapon <laughs> um the fairies i've got the she in here <laughs> um i'm hoping this gives some inspiration and gives you things to work off and i have to note too very quickly wayland is associated with the stories of beowulf so i will talk about that tomorrow i do believe carolyn's been doing readings of stories of beowulf so this is very much down this avenue as well blessed be mary part hope you're all keeping sane and safe from the craziness um, keep strong have a focus use this weapon and this is how you use it and make sure to not upset your brownies keep your house brownies happy <laughs> blessed be and merry part